Des Byrne, co-founder of Product World. Welcome to Irish Startup TV. Thank you, nice to be here, Richard. Would you like to tell us a little bit about Product World, what you do? Okay, we started Product World five years, and we specialize in catalog software for business-to-business -business manufacturing. What inspired the business? Um, I was working in Germany with uh, Siemens um, a number of years ago, and they had this really weird problem. They were unable to find a little cable that you plug into your computer. It cost them 50,000 euro to fix that problem. Right. And um, it just struck me as being an absurd problem to have, so we set about solving that. How could an organization like Siemens find a product that it knew it needed and knew what it wanted, and how could it find it fast on the internet? Wow, so the product that Siemens was looking for, was it a product that Siemens had invented, or was it that they had this just widget they just needed to source from anywhere they just, online? They just needed to be able to source that widget from somebody online, and they, they knew what they wanted, they knew exactly what they wanted, but they couldn't find it. In practical terms, your solution, Product World, how does it help a company like Siemens to solve a problem like that? So uh, what it does is it makes that widget very searchable on the internet um, through a variety of different means. It means that Siemens could go on to the supplier of that wid widget's website and using certain features of our software will find, down, find it, filter down and find the widget within seconds. And how did you go about creating this technology? Um, Two of us got together, a guy called Ken Corkin and myself got together and we started thinking about the problem that was there and how could we go about solving it. And we initially started doing some work with the Digital Enterprise Research Institute up in Galway and we started off a project with them and then we sort of pivoted the product based on uh, customer feedback because we had some early stage customers. Um, and then based on feedback we started to iterate quickly on what people were looking for and uh, slowly but surely the product started going in a you know, our strategy was in one direction, but the product started uh, filling itself out to be a complete solution for, for customers. So Siemens are German headquartered? Yes. Did you initially look to the German market, or what market did you start to test the product in? Uh, we tested the product in the UK first, uh, although our target customers are really in Germany and the United States. That's our two big target markets. Uh, we do have customers, though, in China, Japan, Korea, um, Czech Republic, France, Belgium. Um, other places, but primarily our, our main business is in the US and Germany. So your, your, your product is ostensibly a, a search product. How did you go about getting to market in the early days and, and what kind of advice did you have to other <laughs> software companies looking to scale internationally? That's an interesting one. Um, two parts of that. So how did we start originally? Well, you know, a piece of advice that I give to people starting up businesses is, is that to do something that's not, not repeatable initially so that you can learn from customers. So what I actually did day one is I went to trade shows where I knew my customers were and I went up to them and pitched them cold. So I went looking for at a stand where the VP of marketing, that's my target customer, where that person would be standing and I'd go up and pitch them our business. And that's how we started off. Iterate hard and under live fire. Yeah, and on, on the basis of that, and the basis of that sort of feedback and winning customers doing that, because we did win customers, including some very large ones, Fortune 500 companies, then we use that model to try to go to market then in a more scalable methodology. And that scalable methodology now includes things like uh, inbound marketing, um, some search engine marketing, and also we do cold calling campaigns. How did you decide to base yourselves in Cork? Because you mentioned doing some early on research up in Galway. Uh, well, I'm living in Cork for over 20 years, nearly 25 years now. Um, and I'm not a Cork man though? I'm not a Cork, I'm not from Cork originally, no. Um, you know what, at the end of the day, I was looking for to, to do something that I could actually stay in Cork with. I like Cork, it's a great region, and I was looking to get myself a job in Cork. I needed to create a job for myself. I had gone to Italy for a couple of years, that job was bringing me to China, and I decided, you know what, I don't want to go to China, I prefer to stay in Cork and set up my own business, and that's how it started. We lost a lot of talent over the last couple of years, and there's a lot of different reasons. That yeah. Fundamentally, I believe part of it was that if you're super smart, it can be very difficult to get a role that will properly engage one in Ireland. Yeah, I agree with you, yeah. Um, we've probably lost guts of half a million, maybe more really bright people out of this country in the last couple of years, and it's terrible pity, and we're starting to feel the effect of that now because, you know, we're seven people, we're trying to hire our eighth, we're looking for a salesperson, that's a struggle. But from what's happening in Cork, I'm getting a very real sense that the, the tide is turning, that there are a number of people that are really working together to promote Cork as a great place to start and scale yeah. from. I think it is. I mean, you know, certainly in our early years, 
we probably had it easier in Cork for a variety of different reasons than I would have had in Dublin. And as you can get, I'm born in Dublin, so you can get the accent, and so I know Dublin really well. And, and I feel that we probably had it easier here than maybe similar business did in Dublin in certain ways. In other ways, not so much. But in terms of what really mattered, in terms of people, staff, you know, getting access, customers, then it probably was a little bit easier here. So, Des, it's great to hear that you're hiring at the moment. What kind of a candidate are you looking for? Well, there's actually a couple. Um, we're, we're looking for an outbound salesperson based in Cork. Um, so we're currently hiring for that role. Uh, we're looking at a marketer uh, to focus on US pharmaceutical sector. We're undecided whether we base that person in Cork or the US. There's pros and cons to both. And we also have signed up a, uh, an independent rep organization in the German market. We just signed that yesterday. So they're the type of, they're, it's all sales and marketing people because you know, right now we've got a really strong de development team and you know, what we're going to focus on for the next uh, 18 to 24 months is scaling the business and scaling the business of sales and marketing resources. So that's our focus for the next period of time. Des, I'm absolutely delighted to hear of uh, an, an Irish company that, that has a problem that it's trying to hire and it can't find people. That's a really good problem to have. I guess so. <laughs> It's good to be uh, at that phase because we haven't been at it for very long. You know, we've had a lot of um, hurdles to get over in the last couple of years. It's uh, cost us a lot personally, professionally, but it's good to be at this point right now, yeah. Fantastic. Well, Des, I wish you the best of luck, or Thank continued you. best of luck, and uh, look forward to checking in the progress in a few months' time. Thank you very much, Richard. Pleasure Thanks for being here, Des. Thank you.